If you watched the pre-launch event, the chances are you may have been pleased to see improved flight planning coming to the new sim. And if like me, once you got your hands on the EFB, it's great for fairly basic flight planning with a few legs, but for more complex flight plans, well, it's hard to visualize and awkward to find your way around at times. And if like me, you completely missed the fact that the EFB is only half the story. There's a free expanded flight planning tool that's fairly comprehensive and directly linked to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks very much for watching and let's get started. And there's some more good news. It's from Working Title. Head over to your favorite search engine and enter this. Planner.flightsimulator.com Link in the notes below. Working Title created the electronic flight bag in Sim. And this will take you to the expanded version. It has been developed in partnership with Microsoft. When you first enter the planner, it will ask you to log in with your Microsoft account. Make sure it's the same one that you use for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. You'll only need to do this once or alternatively and as recommended, simply run the sim. It'll pick up the details and log you in. And here you'll find a surprisingly versatile and flexible flight planning tool that will link directly to your EFB in sim. As you zoom into the map, so the level of detail increases proportionally and the information displayed will depend whether you're in IFR or VFR mode. On the top right hand side is where you can choose what information is and is not to be displayed. Let's just zoom in a little bit more so we can demonstrate it accurately. That should about do. Let's now see what the map menu has to offer. The top item is your map mode, such as high IFR, low IFR, or VFR. If you've ever used a visual flight planner previously, well, you'll be familiar with the different modes and what they display. You can use the plus and minus to zoom in and out, or the mouse wheel, whatever is your preference. Let's continue. I'll be doing a high IFR flight plan today to demonstrate. So let's change the map back to that quickly. From the menu bar, you can also choose which navs you want displayed. Airways, VORs, NDBs and the like. The same applies to waypoints and very usefully VFR reporting points. Depending where you are in the world, well, the maps can get pretty complicated. So you can also select and deselect air classification spaces. Particularly useful when you're trying to zoom into some details. There's also a separate option, very usefully again, for displaying restricted areas, prohibited areas, military installations and the like. Interestingly also, there's a measurement tool, which can be quite useful if you're trying to plan a leg, you're aware of your speed, and want to plan a flight of a certain time period. There's also an option to display precipitation, clouds, wind bobs, and the like. And for some of the functions, you can vary the altitude at which these will be visible. Not sure if this is not fully implemented, perhaps a little bit buggy, but I couldn't get it to work as I expected. Or perhaps I was doing something wrong, not sure but be very useful to see this function fully operational as it can assist particularly with VFR flights. The next item is particularly useful again for VFR. Here you can display a variety of information such as built up areas, highways, roads, railways, as well as switch the map to topographical mode, which will give you a visual guide towards elevations, that type of thing. Once again, the level of detail will vary depending on your current zoom level. Zoom in to get more info. The only negative from my side is elevation data is not displayed. That's it from a map display point of view. Let's head over now and have a look at the flight planning options. First and foremost, you can select your aircraft. All the aircraft in your hangar will be displayed. You can search by type, manufacturer, developer and so on. I'm going to select turboprop because I'm looking for the TBM 930. There it is, selected. Now we've selected our aircraft, let's have a look at the flight details. We can stipulate here what type of flying we're doing, IFR, VFR and so on, call sign and the like. Under the options tab, you can select how you want your data displayed, kilograms or pounds, inches of mercury or hectopascals and so on. It includes a comprehensive set of charts which we'll be having a look at a little bit later on. But let's get on with planning our route. As with most flight planners, it wants a start and end. Today we're going to be doing a relatively short hop from Lisbon in Portugal all the way to Madrid in Spain. 
You can select by ICAO code. Simply click on the map. I'm looking for Lima Echo Mike Delta. There it is. And once those points are selected, it's displayed on the map. On the bottom right, the small icon right at the bottom, select that. It'll automatically zoom to display the complete route at any time. Very handy feature. For our route now, we can use one of the suggested routes. Or go ahead and enter our own departure, en route, arrival and approach details. I've selected suggested route. It's got one there. I think I'll select that. That route is now displayed. It's automatically selected the most appropriate runway. The suggested routes may or may not be real world routes. It's not added departure, arrival or approach details because your selection here may be dependent upon the weather. In each instance, however, you can choose auto select. It'll do it for you. Not necessarily the most sensible one though. Or you can select it yourself and very helpfully it gives you a graphic display of all the different departure routes. In this instance, I'm just going to leave it as direct. Seems the most appropriate to me. However, for our destination in Madrid, well, we're probably going to need more detail. I'm going to start by selecting the arrival. And once again, helpfully, there's a graphical display recommending landing 32 left. And a number of points with labels are displayed. Based on my route, I think this one is going to be the most appropriate. So I will highlight that and press select. The arrival will bring me in line for my final approach. And of course, you can make changes to the route at any time by selecting the three dots next to the waypoint and delete any entries you don't need. That's my arrival done. Let's set up the approach. Once again, you can auto select. As I'm in the TBM, I'm going to choose the ILS approach. Runway 32 left. And with that, helpfully, it's also indicating the go around route and the relevant holding point. The different phases of flight are color coded. At any time, you're free to make any changes. I think that's a fairly tight turn, so I'm just going to delete a few waypoints. It's quick and easy to do so. I think NAPTA can go and then it should be good. I'm happy with that. And we can now get an overview of the complete route. Direct departure, then flying an airway with an arrival and approach into Madrid. Now that our route is complete, we can get some more information by going to the briefing tab. And this will display flight data very similar to what you would see on SimBrief. However, one must consider this a work in progress at this stage, as there are some bugs under the fuel and payload tabs. So doing accurate fuel planning from this flight planner at the moment is a bit hit and miss. But you can always enter that data in the sim via the EFB prior to taking flight until such time as they update this. And lastly, let's head to the knee board and this is where we can see our charts. And the charts are neatly grouped for departure and arrival airports. The charts displayed are LIDO charts. These are from Lufthansa Systems as opposed to the Jefferson maps used by the likes of Navigraph and so on. You also have the option to pin charts for any that you want reference to during flight. The charts are fully detailed, but I can't vouch for how up to date they are or how often they'll be updated. But the chart coverage does look very comprehensive indeed. And a reminder, these are free. Our flight planning is now completed. Just close these charts. And along the bottom left, we have three tabs. Create a new flight, select a saved current flight plan, or save a flight plan, which I've just clicked on. You can now choose the name that you want to give your saved flight plan for quick and easy future reference. That's done. Now I can save the new flight plan. This flight planning suite is fairly expensive, although as mentioned, a work in progress. I haven't covered all the features here, obviously. You can specify the altitude for your flight. Look at Meta for both departure and arrival and many of the other common aspects you'd expect from a flight planner. I'm now going to go and select Load Flight Plan. It's the middle tab, because here it gives us a very interesting opportunity. I'm going to click on the flight plan. It's highlighted. Here we can delete, but more interestingly, we can copy link. And this will copy the link of the cloud-based flight plan, which you can share with others on PC or Xbox. And when they use that link, well, they'll bring up your flight plan which they can use to load in the sim and then save it locally if they want to as well. How does that work? Well, I was hoping you're going to ask. 
let's go and have a look. So we've loaded up the sim and I've selected the TBM 930. Note your flight plan is saved in .pln format, so that flight plan could be used with any aircraft. Now I'm going to hit Tab to bring up the EFB. Once up, I'm going to hit the Root icon, then select Load Flight Plan. And it's automatically linked to the web-based flight planner. There's the one I want from Lisbon to Madrid, Load Flight Plan. And the flight plan is now loaded into the EFB. We can see the various waypoints displayed, the arrival and the ILS approach we selected. If we now scroll down to the bottom, we see the option File Plan with ATC. When we do that, our flight plan is now in Microsoft Flight Simulator. You also have the option to send the route to the avionics for the aircraft that you've chosen. However, this rarely works, but you can do it once you've spawned at the airport anyway. So this is a bug and seems aircraft dependent to some degree. Not sure why it's almost as if, well, it perhaps wasn't tested fully before release, but surely that can't be the case. Jeez, what am I thinking? An important point here, once you've loaded the flight plan, under the load save flight plans, you could of course save that flight plan locally for future reference. We're done with the EFB for now. We can now go ahead and jump into SIM. Whilst we load in, this will work with some aircraft, but not all. Once again, I think it's a bug. For example, it's not working with the A320 version 2, which is a surprise. Tower, Dar, Charlie Romeo, Kilo Uniform, Sierra ready for departure runway 20FR to Barajas. ATC got the correct runway and the correct destination. Let's just set up our MFD so that it's easier to see our route. I'm going to make it full screen. We can see no route is loaded, but I didn't send it to avionics. Do a quick check by checking our flight plan and there's no entries there. So now let's bring up the EFB and select send route to avionics. And there's our flight plan. Let's just close the EFB. We can do a quick check. There's our airways, arrival and our approach into Madrid. On the MFD map display we can see elements of the route being displayed as well. With the first leg as always being in magenta. Success. If we zoom out, we should be able to see the whole route, which we can. Now done a quick cross check on the route, all the waypoints are there. Everything is exactly as we expected it to be. We can now go ahead and prepare for our departure. Job done. As the flight plan is saved in the cloud under your account, can be used for any aircraft as I think I've already mentioned. Now trying it with the Boeing 747-400 heavy transporter. On this occasion, I'll also try and send the route directly to the avionics. Interesting to see if it works, as this is a 2024 aircraft. OK, we're in. Now to select the legs button to see whether or not our flight plan is in situ. And we can see that the route is blank. OK, that calls for the EFB. Let's bring that up now by hitting the tab key. And let's do the same from here. Send route to avionics. Close the EFB. And yes, it's worked. The route is now there. Whilst I acknowledge I'm speculating here, I suspect that some of the incompatibility with regards to loading the avionics from the world map may be related to whether it is a 2020 or 2024 aircraft and whether or not it has built-in compatibility with the EFB but certainly a reasonable expectation would be for it to work with all 2024 aircraft. Turning now to the important point of sharing flight plans, particularly for those who enjoy multiplayer experiences and sharing flight plans between PC and Xbox. I have at this stage to give a massive shout out and thanks to Dan Lance, a member and moderator on the Simhanger Discord, and quite frankly, a Xbox champion. I shared the flight plan we used in this video with him and he successfully brought it into the Xbox. And here are some screenshots from Dan. For those of you on Xbox, he recommends that you access the flight planner via your PC, phone or whatever other mechanism you want to choose and save the flight. It saves to your Xbox account in the cloud and then is available for download. Are you using the flight planner? And what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. 
Thank you very much for joining me today. Stay well, look after yourselves, and as always, see you again soon. Bye for now.